Hi everybody, I'm Stuart Small, founder of G-Force Golf and inventor of the G-Force Swing Trainers. In this video we're going to talk about thrust, also known as early extension. This. So I'm going to go through the 3D in a minute. I'm going to show you some tour players and show you that they're doing very little of it. And it's probably one of the biggest faults in the swing and it's causing a lot of other problems as well. So we need to really address it straight away. I've got some great drills that we can work on. Uh, to help you improve or minimize your thrust and it's going to help you stop coming over the top as well and get the club down into a better delivery position. The other thing as well, it's going to really improve your balance. Now your balance is really important because as soon as your central nervous system sort of senses you're going to lose balance, it's going to throw everything it's got at trying to get you back in balance. Now unfortunately your golf swing is going to be the last thing on that list. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and check out the 3D uh, so you can understand it a little bit more and then we're going to come back outside, talk through it, hit a few shots and then going to give you some great drills to work on minimising your thrust. Let's go check it out. Okay, I'm going to show you a pro versus amateur thrust. So on the right we've got Bryson DeChambeau, on the left we've got an amateur who's coming over the top big time and we can see it's going to be related to having too much thrust. So what is thrust? It's basically when your pelvis, this part here, thrust towards the ball in this direction. Okay, we can measure that with gears because it's so accurate and it's got the markers placed on the body and it's got super, super high speed cameras. So it'll measure thrust very accurately, um, sort of within 0.2 millimeters. And you can see it in this section here, thrust, you see that number going up. So what we see with the amateur, the starting point will always be at zero where the pelvis is centered. And then you can see he's going up to sort of two and a half inches thrust in towards the ball in this direction here. Look at Bryson, again starts at zero, so the pelvis is centered. And then you can see a little bit of thrust there. You know, it's less than an inch, so there's not much going on in the way of thrust. Okay, so that's the first thing you gotta look at now to get rid of it. Like I'm gonna show you when we go back outside. You've got to get a chair on your backside and then your head up against the wall. So I'm going to show you the drill, how you, how you can sort of minimize the amount of thrust. So if you look from behind, again, what's really cool with this system is we can put in this vertical plane and it will sort of show the pressure points on the butt as it goes into the backswing and as it comes down. So if you're looking at Bryson, we can see that right butt cheek against the wall on the way back and then the pressure coming across to the left butt cheek. Look at the amateur, we can see no pressure there on the right cheek going back, so the hips have thrusted forwards towards the ball. And then there's a little bit of pressure there coming through, but the damage has been done and there's nothing you can do about it now because your body's already sensed you're losing balance and it's throwing in the nasty compensations that are never going to help you hit the ball consistently. The other thing we can measure is a hand pass. So we can see this grey line as he goes into the backswing and then the hands come down on the yellow line on the way down and through. So this is the hand pass. So we can see with Bryson, he's going back on the grey line, going back, and then the blue line coming down. So with Bryson, the grey line going back is more upright than the blue line coming down. So we can see what we call a shallowing of the club on the downswing. But what we see is these lines, they're very close together. And that's what you're going to find with the tour players. The, the hand path, the path the hands travel up and down, typically are very close together. When you look at an amateur, we can see them much further apart and we can see the hand path is more inside going back and then outside coming down. And then, you know, just look at that gap there, that, that's massive. And the thing with the hand path, what that's gonna do is affect the path your club head travels on as well, because guess what? Your hands are holding that golf club. It's the last point of contact. So it's important to get your hand path correct 
going up and down and, and trying to get it as close together as possible this is going to be the next video that I'm going to be focusing on and helping you achieve a, a better hand path so let's get back outside and give you some drills to work on minimizing the thrust in your golf swing okay now you understand thrust a little bit more also known as early extension I can give you a great drill um, that was given to me by Michael Neff he's the director of Gears Golf He's been looking at the golf swing in 3D for the past 20 years. So if he knows, if you want to know anybody who knows anything about the golf swing, he's the man you need to talk to. You need to look at his stuff. Michael Neff, Gears Golf. Go and check him out. So I know a lot of you swing over the top. You get to the top, club works sort of out this way. Okay, your body then compensates. Your central nervous system is trying to rebalance you and you know make sure you don't fall on the floor. So as the club is swinging out this way and there's a lot of force going in that direction then what will tend to happen is your hips will thrust forward to try and keep you balanced okay so as, you, as your hips thrust forward you know your head and chest will come up and everything and you'll release the club very early because essentially what's happening as you start thrusting forwards you know you, you're backing up you're moving up and away from the ground so the only way you can Get, the, get to the ball without missing it is to, to dump the club, you have to release it too soon. So you're going to lose all your power, and you're not going to strike it very well. So we need to try and have very little thrust and the only way you can do it really is to do a drill, uh, which I'm going to show you in a minute, where is you get a, if you get a chair against your backside, uh, if you film yourself you can draw a line, a uh, vertical line down your backside and then one down from your forehead as well because what we're trying to do when we swing when we check ourselves on the video when we go up to the top we're trying to get this right butt cheek to stay against that vertical line or actually a little bit behind it as you can see in 3d and then as we come into the down swing we're really trying to move the pressure from the right butt across to the center of your butt and then to the left butt cheek as you go through so you can see as i'm pulling the club down I'm really keeping my, my backside out, almost feels like I'm squatting down a little bit and just continue that all the way through. My head will stay in that position as well. So if you don't do it properly when you video yourself, you'll see your butt will just come straight off that line and then your head will come off the other one as well. And then you start compensating, which most players do. Uh, you know, everybody's very good at compensating, you know, because you don't want to miss the ball. So you've got to get that, that set up, butt against the wall, head against the wall. When you get to the top of the swing, first move down, go and watch my last video where I'm talking about the first move down where you, you're trying to pull the arms and club down and, and like Garcia talks about as well. As you pull the arms and club down, you need to stay sort of in that squatted position. You need to keep your right butt cheek against that wall then stay in that position as you come through and then into the finish. So what I tend to do is I'll get to the top and stop as a drill and then from there I feel like I pull my arms down and then just sort of maintain that, that bit of a squat feeling that I've got there as opposed to that. Okay, like I say, the only reason why you're going to tend to do that is if you are throwing the club out this way because there's a lot of force going in that direction. So you've got to compensate for it in some way and unfortunately the the compensation in the golf swing is to is to do that that will keep you on your feet that will stop you falling on the floor and it's going to cause a, a lot of problems in your golf swing we've got to really balance the swing that's the key if you think of the center of your pelvis is your balance point and there's only so far you can sort of go this way and that way before your central nervous system kicks in and then tries and you know throws in that life-saving Comp uh, compensation whatever that's going to look like so we've got to keep this quiet right you know when you're walking down the street and you trip up the first thing to happen is your arms will fly out or you'll make some funky move to to try and keep yourself on your feet and that's your central nervous system kicking in you know to keep you alive that that's how it works and unfortunately for a lot of you when you swing a golf club it's kicking in on every single shot so basically you're gonna have a hard time striking the golf ball uh, freely, as in like having a clear mind. 
you know, without any compensations there. So we've got to keep this central nervous system really quiet, you know, um, don't wake it up basically. So if we can keep the center of the pelvis centered going back down here into the finish and then in, into the finish there, you're going to keep it nice and quiet, which is what you want. And you can get on with swinging purely without any manipulations because as soon as that kicks in, then something else is going to come in to compensate. So we've got to keep it quiet. Okay, so do the drills, get to the top, pull the arms down, maintain that squat, butt against the wall. Get that feeling a couple of times. Arms dropping. We've seen Justin Rose doing this same drill here. I've seen Bryson doing the same, getting to the top of his swing and doing this, not leaving the arms up and doing this. Okay, that's gonna cause that. So if you leave your arms up and rotate, like I talk about in my last video, you're definitely gonna be thrusting the ball. So do a couple of those, get that feeling, and then get yourself to the ball and give it a rip, solid. I'll show it you with the chair and the wall now, and you wanna work on this at home indoors, outdoors, do it every day. It's such an important part of the golf swing to work on. So let's go and show you that now. Okay, so all you're gonna need is a wall and a chair, simple as that. So we've gotta get the head against the wall. You're probably better off wearing a cap unless you wanna scrape your head. So get your head against the wall. You're sort of trying to get into your, your normal golf posture. Cross your arms across your chest like this, okay into your posture so I can feel this chair is probably a little bit low but I can feel it on my lower lower butt cheeks here okay so what I'm trying to do then is is rotate so I'm just trying to turn these shoulders now your shoulders if you've looked at all my other videos uh, that they, they, they rotate more sort of vertically to the ground okay this is another good drill to help you turn your shoulders on on the right angle and help you keep the club on the right swing plane, which I'll talk about in a second. So as I turn back, my left shoulder will go down. My right shoulder will work back up behind me. My right butt, I can feel it on that chair. And that's a great feeling to get. My head stays on the wall as well. If I'm thrusting, what we're gonna see is, as I start to turn, is obviously my head's gonna come off and then my, my butt's gonna come off as well. If you turn your shoulders too level with the ground, which is a massive mistake for a lot of players, what you'll find is you'll have a hard time keeping your head on the wall. So it's great for getting the proper shoulder turn angle, which should always be more vertical to the ground. Next time you watch the golf, pay attention to the shoulders of all the tour players, because you're gonna see very steep shoulder turns. And if you film yourself, you're probably gonna see very flat shoulder turn, so this is the drill to sort your shoulders out. So I can feel that right butt on the, the chair, pull the right shoulder back and up behind my head, left shoulder goes down. Keeping my head on my, the wall as well keeps me centered, so it's gonna stop me from you know, swaying, a lot of players do that, so it's just gonna help me keep centered. You know, just coming off the wall to here, I had the same feeling that I had on the wall, so that's why it's important to do. And you can do it every day, throughout the day, in the house, at work, you know, just get, get, get against the wall, get the chair out, start doing this, it's a great job. So it keeps you centered, it gets your shoulders turning properly at the right angle, and it helps you minimize your hip thrust. Okay, here's the thrust. See as that goes forward, this comes back, equal and opposite reactions. So right butt cheek against the chair, and then as I start to come the other way towards the ball, I'm coming through. I can feel the pressure moving across the center of my butt now, okay, which is still on the chair, and then to my left side. So impact, my hips are open, you can see they're open. We don't want to come to impact with the hips square, so we're trying to turn out the way. So it's on my left butt cheek now, and then through into the finish. So it's always on there until you finish, and your head's always on the wall, okay. This wall drill helps with uh, finding out how much flexibility you got, how far you can turn. Everyone's different, right? So when your head comes off the wall, if your butt is staying on the chair, when your head comes off the wall, that, that's as far as you should be able to turn. So for example, if 
you're a little bit older, butt on the chair, turning, and then your head starts to come off a little bit. Okay, that, that's because you're sort of restricted on how, how far you can turn, but your indicator, your red flag, is your head coming off. Okay, so if, if you're finding that happening, you know, it's, it's really down to flexibility. So head on the wall, butt on the chair, turn the shoulders, left shoulder down, right shoulder back, Keep the butt on the chair all the way through to the finish. And then as you come through, your head rotates. Okay, so in the, in the golf swing, your head will only do like a rotation movement. Okay, it'll never move side to side. So that's a cracking drill. And if you work on that every day, a few minutes every day, it's really easy to do. You'll train, you know, the proper sort of pivot motion, keeping you centered. You'll train your shoulders to turn at the right angle. Look at all the tour players, they're doing the same thing. Uh, and it'll train you to have less thrust in your swing. So as I talked about earlier, it will prevent you from coming over the top. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. Lots more to come. I'm building a, the G-Force Research Lab. You know, I've, I've invested a lot of money in Gears Golf 3D motion capture. So I'm gonna be spending a lot of time doing videos in 3D to give you the real answers to the golf swing and get you playing better, quicker, and, and the best you can be to your fullest potential. So I hope you can join me on that. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and you're gonna get updates when the videos come out. Thanks for watching. I just caught the G-Force train at eight. It's like the orange whip, only well made. You can hit shots with it, watch the ball fly. A hundred bucks said the first 20 go right. It'll train your rhythm, get your game back to where it used to be and maybe where you never knew. Pit, pit, pick it up. Give it a rip, you need another toy, not another tip. Uh.